Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe, uh, Monroe Live. Um, we're standing in front of the, um, the plaid, it's up on the hoist. Uh, if we look over here to my left, um, you can see that we've taken off the, uh, the little shields that go on underneath, mostly for pass by noises and whatnot. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what we've found so far. We're uh, kind of like rushed here because um, we need to get the battery out today and um and we're also going to uh, do the rest of the draining so far we've taken out the ac fluid and um and like i say we're going to look at this quickly but we're not going to go into any depth or as corey says platitudes <laughs> anyhow so we're going to look at this and the first thing that comes up is something that corey noticed here this is the ankle uh, we used to call it the ankle breaker but now it's the yeah. got a new new name so it's this part right here it's a carbon fiber reinforced plastic we can tell by how it's shaped and formed and the label on it actually says cf ankle catcher so uh, one of the primary uh, roles of this is in pedestrian protection you know for when you're in when you're running through the different scenarios it, because ankle catcher it wants to have your ankle hit to flip you up onto the hood you never want to get sucked under the car, so the strength of this is very important when you're dealing with pedestrian protection. Um, we'll have to look uh, and compare and contrast to other Model S's and Model X's to see if this is unique to this vehicle. But seeing a carbon fiber piece right here was one thing we noticed right off the bat. Um, Sandy, do you want to talk about the manufacturing yeah. method for the front cradle? Yeah, well, right here, uh, you're looking at um what used to be like near impossible but when bmw did it on the bmw i3 um once everybody found out that it was possible everybody in the planet's doing it so this is called an extrusion it means basically you shove um aluminum in through a uh, through a gauge that gives you this outside shape and then when it comes out you can cut it up and you can see that this is machined and things like that you can cut it up and uh, it gives you uh, a cross section that you can utilize and put other things together. Over here you can see these are all TIG welds, uh, tungsten inert gas welds. And uh, we've had some debate. I, I think personally that these are, uh, these are probably uh, robotic, um, but uh, Corey and some other guys think it might be manual. I've never been able to see anybody do anything quite as good as that. So this, this cradle is, uh, is is nice and um, and it supports all kinds of stuff so mm -hmm. why don't you talk about that yeah so with the cool. advent of all the level 2 level 2.5 level 3 autonomous you have to have redundancy in your critical system so you can see very clearly the redundant circuitry the low voltage circuitry on the steering system we have done a full teardown of the model 3 and the model y they're even doubling up on power supply. So you see a positive, negative, positive, negative, and then you have twice as much wiring as you would need in a traditional car that doesn't have um, redundant circuitry for you know, the, your, your ADAS right. system. Yeah. Also notice this large uh, double, it's a double thick piece of metal to protect the leading edge of the battery. Oftentimes in other EVs, we see many of the connectors are exposed to the elements besides a thin plastic shield, which we showed as we just kicked this off. This is very heavily protected, and you can see that this is welded together. Um, we, it goes all the way around to this outer edge right here. So this is a very robust, double thickness, I believe it's an aluminum uh, front leading edge battery protection. Mm. Um, We're gonna probably give you a lot more detail on materials and whatnot, and that gets us right into um, the front suspension, which um, I don't know an awful lot about the problems that were on the Model S before. Um, th this is a unique uh, system, instead of having a lower control arm, having this uh, uh, basically uh, double system that you like. I don't know exactly the term because uh, really and truly it's, it's, it's unique. Called, it's called virtual ball. Well, it's called a virtual ball, but but the virtual balls that I've seen don't quite look like this. BMW is a virtual ball for yeah, pretty much everything. So, yeah, <clears throat> so this would be your tension link because yeah. as you're driving, the, the force is pulling the wheel back and this would be in tension. This would be your compression link. 
And um, we've seen some similar systems to this, but but uh, Sandy, do you want to go into the, the quality issue that, yeah. that, we, that we're having? So if you, uh, if you look at all of the different um, views that they've given on what's going on with the, the old Model S or, or what they had in the old Model S, it looks like wherever they had a ball, um, there was, uh, there was an issue. Um, I don't exactly know what the issue is, but it showed some cracked, uh, some cracked surfaces. And in some cases, the, the ball was completely exposed. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to examine this. And quite frankly, the, the ride and drive on a virtual ball is far superior to, uh, what you're going to find on anything else. But we want to find out maybe why things uh, things failed on some of the vehicles. My personal uh, uh, thought is that uh, some purchasing agent uh, that was maybe on the supply side or something uh, wound up uh, buying a cheaper material. Um, material makes a big difference whether or not you're going to have safety and whether you're going to have uh, things actually work and if you get a situation where you only see a few of these kinds of scenarios especially on a forged part like that um, it kind of begs the uh, question um, was there a material change was there some sort of a mistake in the materials but we're going to look at this and then we're going to see if we can find one that's broken or buy an old model s and uh, see what the differences might be we might even go in and uh, and check to see what this material is um, uh, before we, before we uh, uh, move to the back of the, back of the bus here. Why don't we talk a little bit about the, um, the shock system and the air suspension system. Yeah, so this Model S, Model S Plaid, as well as other Model S and X models have a reservoir hanging off of the shock. I know, Zach, can you come around and see here? And you can see the air suspension all the way up top. So this is really important for when you're going into launch mode, the front of the car will tip way down. Um, and for our ride and drive, uh, Sandy, our big road trip, 3,500 miles, yeah. we set this into comfort mode. So not only are they able to adjust the damping of the shock, and they have this reservoir here to account for the extra fluid, um, but the stiffness of the shock as well on the ride height. Um, this is not, unique to the Model S Plaid. This is common in many high-end vehicles, BMWs, Land Rovers, uh, but a typical system, we, we see it right there. Uh, something that, that's not, it's the first time I've seen it, the bolt, the two bolts holding the brake caliper to the knuckle go through the caliper in this direction, in the direction of travel. Usually you see an ear right here, an ear off of the, the caliper, and then they'll bolt through that ear. Very unique. Sandy, have you seen that? I'm, no. gonna, I'm gonna No. prove me wrong in the comments, but I wanna look harder. Now, granted, this is a fixed caliper. So when you have a sliding caliper, you typically wanna, wanna secure yeah. in that direction to allow for you know, all your Puts maiden. Puts it into double shear. But that is the first I've, saw, I've seen that. Now, I'll have to look back at the, the previous Model S's and X's that we have analyzed, but you learn something new every day, and that's something new that I've, that I've well, seen. That's one of the reasons we look at this car, because every day we see something new. So um, right here is the battery. That's what's going to be coming out next. Uh, we want to do that before we start letting the, uh, letting the fluids out. It just it works out better. It's not as messy. Let's go to the back end here and, um, and have a look at, um, well, you might as well just keep right out of go with the suspension. To, uh, this, this suspension right here, the rear suspension is very similar. Yeah, so if you think of the Model 3 and the Model Y, a lower cost vehicle, more steel. Here you see primary, primarily aluminum. So the subframe is a high pressure aluminum die casting and you can see all of these ejector pins. This is a very large casting, similar to about the size of the Giga casting or Mega yeah, casting. Yeah, Mega casting. It's very but, big. But it, it, probably, it probably doesn't weigh as much because you've got a lot of this area, area here is like fresh air. Now, this one will be unique to the Model S Plaid because it's, it's mounting to this massive double motor rear unit. Uh, the lower links 
are forged aluminum, but there is an adjustable uh, mm -hmm. front link here. And you can see that you can adjust that for most likely for toe, it's on the leading edge. Then if you spin around, you can see the, um, the uh, what do you call it, reservoir for the, I'm not sure, is that the shock or the air, that's a that's shock. An air, it looks like an air suspension valve, but yeah. when we pull the, the air suspension off, we'll, we'll dive into yeah. to more Going detail. Into more detail. Now, there's been other people who have had their Model S Plaid up on a, a lift, and you've seen this shot, but where Sandy comes in and where Monroe comes in, we're point, pointing out the minute details, particularly in manufacturing and quality, that may be missed by other people who have this vehicle. So we, we first noticed something that Elon loves to do. He loves to eliminate the need for brackets by integrating as much as possible into an existing part. So one, two, three, four, five, six mounting provisions for the lower shield are integrated into this large uh, die casting. Mm. It would be so much easier to eliminate all those for the person developing the mold for that casting and mount on a bracket similar to you see here. So this is not ideal, but there but could have been- no other way of making it happen. Yeah. So. Where I, I knew that there would be some sharp-eyed guy on this uh, video that was going to say, "Well, what about that one? You can't make this one work because you've got to access the the electric motor above it." So by putting in these two screws and whatnot, if it would have been us designing, it isn't two screws; it's, it's a screw locator and, and a locator. So this is the kind of thing that we would probably want to do. This holds it from moving back and forth. And this one holds it in position as it were so i even though this is a bracket and i really don't like brackets this is a much better way of going than what we would normally see um, on a product so the question is what could they do that would have been different how about that mounted to this if we could have had this locating feature mounted to the the electric motor if it was like the only um thing that we could make happen that would that would, that would be a good idea, just having a stud, or um, I don't know whether that's, this. yeah, so, so just, a, just a, a nut, basically, it would be tapped into the electric motor. So the rear drive unit itself shares a lot of core common architectural components with the Model 3 and the Model Y. So if you can see this pump, so these electric pumps right here are to circulate the fluid through the stator and through the gearbox. And this looks identical to what we've seen in all Model 3s and Model Ys that we've already torn down. One thing we did notice, there's three. There's one on the left side, one on the left side, one on the right side, and one in the center. So you have three pumps. So it'll be really interesting when we tear down this rear unit to show all of our viewers how they're repurposing some of the core components that may take a lot to develop, like these plate heat exchangers and these, uh, these fluid pumps. Also, the inverters, because of the width of this unit, the inverters are not on the end caps of the motors like we've seen on the Model 3 and the Model Y. They're shifted to the rear. And you can see this plug right here. Um, there's two bolts right here. You remove the two bolts, and then, then you can access the three holes to disconnect the inverter to the stator. Uh, this is a common access port that we've seen on the 3 and the Y but I'm guessing that the shape of the, of the circuit board for the rear inverter is most likely either similar or identical to the Model 3 and the Model Y. So let's just look a little bit on the, uh, the cabling and whatnot and how they put this thing in place. So over here you can see there's really two small holes and if you remember when we looked at the cabling associated with all the other electric vehicles that we've, we've taken apart, this is it. That's the only exposed cabling that we can find, at least right now. If you look at the other cars, there's plenty of orange underneath each one of them. And I think that this is a good example of what Tesla does best, utilizing and making most efficient use of whatever it is that they need to uh, put in place. So this, this cabling, to me, is the hallmark, if you like, of, yeah. of, of Tesla. And there was a little bit of trade-off because this is slightly longer than the cabling that we see for the 3 and the Y, just by looking at it. And we'll have to compare and contrast, but on the 3 and the Y, because it's on the edge right here, they're able to route up 
to about this point. So it looks like it's maybe 20% longer, but still very, very mm. good. Well, the other thing that's cool too is the way they've got um, surrounds, little little oh. aids for manufacturing. So a single screw and a, and a couple of wire ties makes it so that the operator doesn't have any issues putting things into place. They're just up and in. And then again, you see the casting here is giving us the guidance that we need in order to uh, in order to put that thing in quickly. Now the other thing is, see, we're going, this is the gear, uh, that's the electric motor. Right here so, the motor, yeah. So right here, you can see that they've screwed into, I think, yes, into a little boss that was cast in place. So doing the same thing here would have been a, a cool idea and then you get rid of this bracket and the nuts and everything else. Yeah, yeah the reason <coughs> why they, they probably didn't attach to this is this is gonna be torquing back and forth with mm, could under be. load because yeah. see i think it's isolated this is hard mounted oh I no don't know. no it's i uh, think uh, i think it's going to be fine it could have been fine but you know what yeah. um second guessing is a lot easier than doing it right the first time i mean you're you're under a lot of uh, pressure when you're designing a product um, i i do and like this is kind of like teeny yeah i do compared. like this this piece of aluminum right here is there as a protection. If you ran over something like a brick and it came up and it hit this, you're not going to break this plastic yeah. off. I saw that on this side and on that side, even though there's a piece of plastic sticking out there, but not over here. Yeah. I really do like that. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Oh, no, you already got that. Yeah, so anyway, um, this a little look uh, we call these things hoist reviews and uh, a little look at what we've seen so far. Um, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more. This car has got tons of exciting new engineering ideas and we're really looking forward to having you guys along for the ride. And uh, so we'll see you and uh, keep those uh, uh, keep those cards and letters coming in. Actually, I guess it's uh, comments. We do want to find out what you're thinking and what you're interested in. Everything is read uh, when it comes across. And so if you want to know anything or if you've got something you'd like to share with us, please, uh, please let us know. Um, the other thing uh, that, uh, that I need to do is I say before, uh, we really need more people. Um, if you're an engineer or a mechanic or a costing guy, um, we could really use you. We, we, really need, uh, we really need some help because our our company is exploding in size. Anyway, thanks. Oh, sorry. yeah. And if you're interested, email us your resume at hr at leandesign.com. And there you go. Now you got everything. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be seeing you. Bye.